Okay, we recently featured the very moving story of a woman whose life had been transformed by child life. She was just one of the thousands of youngsters who has benefited from the support of the charity over the past 25 years. Esther Ranson is here and tonight she's explaining why the battle for children's rights is far from won. No trouble. <coughs> Childline exists to help children if they're being hurt or abused. When they call, we'd like to be able to tell them their ordeal is over. But if they want their abusers to be tried for their crimes, in my opinion, their ordeal may just be beginning. I believe the way we treat our children in courtrooms is quite, quite wrong. After all, trials were designed by adults for adults to frighten them into telling the truth. But what it does to children is muddle them, confuse them, intimidate them, and all too often silence them entirely. There have been some reforms, like the use of the video link, so children don't have to face the abuser. But still, children have to be cross-examined live during the trial. And that means if a child is very young or has been very badly hurt, the lawyers will think they can't withstand it and the case will be dropped entirely, which means another abuser walks free. Police figures suggest that in over 80% of sexual abuse cases involving children, the abusers are never taken to court for their crimes. In some other countries, children are cross-examined before the trial, outside the courtroom. And I agree with all the experts who believe that if we want justice to be done, we must reform our legal system. In 2009, there was a landmark case, the youngest ever witness to give evidence in the Old Bailey. She'd been abused by one of the men who killed baby Peter Connolly. And in her cross-examination, she was asked to define the difference between truth and lies. But this little girl was only three years old. Detective Chief Superintendent Reg Hook is head of the unit that dealt with that case. The young girl in question what actually gave live evidence in the Old Bailey over three days. That child was asked questions which confused it. There were times when she was unable to answer, and that in itself has highlighted the need for some change. The abuser appealed. It was claimed that evidence from such a young child wasn't credible. But the appeal court ruled that she was, which was a crucial step forward. But still, children are being cross-examined in our courts as if they're adults. In a case recently, a child was asked the question, it didn't happen, did it? Now, I don't know if yes or no is the right answer to that. And it's that sort of question which can completely throw a child. Obviously, all the evidence must be tested thoroughly to ensure a fair trial. Children, like anyone else, could lie or remember incorrectly. But there's no point muddling them or frightening them if we really want the truth. One mother remembers her daughter giving evidence in a sex abuse trial as incredibly traumatic. The whole court case took a year to come, come to the court. She was told she was lying 13 times. But you know this is not the way to talk to a child. If you want the truth from a child, cross-examination is the last mm. way. They have got to readdress the whole system. A child has to readdress this a year later and open up all those wounds. It's cruel to the child. Some improvements have been made over the years to the way children give evidence, but the cross-examination in open court still remains. Everyone's entitled to a fair trial, but I believe the current system is unfair to the children it's intended to protect. Yes, sir. The Ministry of Justice told us that today the children would only give evidence when absolutely necessary and that every step would be taken to ensure that that would be as easy as possible for the child, like giving evidence by video from another room. Mm -hmm. But surely it's unfair for the defendants if children weren't made to go to court because sometimes their evidence might not be reliable. You see, you can test the child's evidence by cross-examining the child somewhere else, like judges' chambers. And that was recommended back in 1989. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you don't test it. You test all evidence. Mm -hmm. But any time an abuser denies it, which is most of the time, the child has to give evidence. And that's why 80% of cases in which the police and social services think a child has been abused, it doesn't go to court 
the abuser walks free. And that cannot be right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's 25 years since the anniversary, isn't it, of Child Line now? Yes, and obviously, Child Line gives children a voice. But would you say, as far as the cases are concerned, that yes. there's less cases now than 25 years ago? The, the trouble is, abuse is a secret crime. So yeah. we don't know what the statistics really are. Mm. But I have written a book to celebrate the 25 years mm -hmm. called Running Out of Tears, available from your nearest good bookshop, Royalties to Childline. Yeah. And in it, there are stories told me by young adults who experienced terrible cruelty and pain in their childhood, but for whom the phone call to Childline made all the difference. Yeah. And it gave them the hope, it transformed their lives, it moved them to a place of safety. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to give something back. And what I learned from writing the book is there's an upward spiral. We know about the downward spiral, which is so tragic when children who've been abused may go on to abuse their own children. Yeah. But the upward spiral is that children who receive help then want to go on and help other children. My daughter says, saved children save other children. Yeah. So they go into teaching, they go into charity, they go into social services. Yeah. So it's a really a, a message of hope in my book, which I had not anticipated. Absolutely well. Thanks, Esther, and all the very best with Thank uh, you. continuing campaigning.